Hello and welcome to the How She Made It series where we talk to, well I talk to, incredible women about how they've made it and what wealth really means to them. Um, today we have the incredible Tracy Osborne from Daring Woman and I'm going to read something to you. So just so you know, when I um, uh, connect with uh, the people that I want to interview, we have a connection call first. And I really loved the, the conversation I had with Tracy. She's just so authentic and so real. And you're going to experience that from her today. But what I also get them to do is fill in a little form. And one of the questions I ask them is, what is their brand message? And this is what Tracy wrote. It was so beautiful. I want to share it with you. She wrote, our vision is to build a sanctuary, a safe haven for women to come and share their stories of inspiration, heartache, love, wisdom, and experience with others, and know that their words are helping others. A place where women can come and get advice, knowledge, and guidance. They need to become the daring woman they've always dreamed about being. I love that so much, Tracy. Please just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about Daring Woman and you and how it started. Well, thank you for having me. It's so much so much fun to be here. So thank you. Um, so about me, you know, I spent the past decade as a virtual assistant and I built a very, very profitable, you know, very big uh, multi VA company. And it, for a long time, it was great. I loved it. I loved helping people. I loved sending out their newsletters. I loved working on their websites. I loved, you know, helping them to reach their goals and their dreams. That's a passion that's always, I've always had. But it started to get to the point last year where um, it, it wasn't satisfying anymore. I mean, yes, I'm still helping these people fulfill their dreams and make their dreams reality. But the trade-off was I wasn't being able to do that with mine. And my dream, my mission has always been, like I said, to help others. And you know, one of the things that I've always said, you know, that the question, if you won the lottery or if money was no object, what would you do? And one of the, one of my answers was always animal rescue. Well, I did animal rescue. Wow. That was hard work. <laughs> but the other one was always, if I won the lottery, I wanted to build a halfway home for the homeless to help get them off the street and back into society. And that's just something that's, it's always been a what if, well, it's time for me to make that what if a now we're going to do this now. And so trying to figure out how to make that happen and how to, how to help women, how to empower women. Um, it, it's been a little bit of a journey. Uh, you know, I've had some wrong turns and I've had a, a few stumbles along the way since last, last year. It's been July of last year is when I kind of started this new path. And um, around December, it was like, okay, I've got to figure this out. We've got to make, you know, make this happen. What is this? And that's when Daring Woman came into play. And Daring Woman is the, the for-profit side is basically a media company, but we're so much more than media. I call us a social impact organization because we are all about helping women reach inside, find that inner strength that's in there that they, you know, they may have forgotten, they've never been able to tap into it, pull it out and help them to become just this shining, amazing, beautiful woman. And we do that through our blog. We do that through my podcast. We're launching a magazine in August. Um, so we're going to have conferences. We're launching our first conference next year. So it's going to be, you know, a lot of different media outlets that we do to that we use for this the nonprofit side is my daring woman project and that's my heart passion and that is where i will be working with women and children who are homeless uh, victims of domestic abuse and sexual trauma and helping them to um just again reintegrate into society get those skills they need we're going to develop programs to help them uh you know whatever it is that they need to do so um, I've got some huge, huge visions for that. So that's, oh that's, that's Daring Woman in a nutshell. That's so amazing. And I feel like this is why we connected because there's so many synergies and alignments between the work that we do. And there's so many great women doing incredible things right now around empowering. There are. 
supporting other women and we all bring our own flavor like my flavor is sister suppers supporting women that way and then through helping through my other company you me she collective like helping them through their brand message and help them find their voice this way and you're doing it in your own unique way through through the medium of giving them a voice interviewing them through those different areas and then the nonprofit sounds incredible as well like i just love the synergies that we have around empowering other women giving them that voice inspiring them and what i'm really hearing the similar thread that we have is like it really is about women inspiring women because it is. When we see that she can do it it's kind of like well if she can do it I can do it, you know, because we are really a reflection of each other. And then those women that are, have had trauma in their lives, you know, to, to be able to have that like hand up and to be able to fully see them and support them is really inspiring as well. So my next question is, what is it about this work? Like, I love your story around becoming a VA. So you helped the women from behind the scenes, right? And I think- right. The work of a VA is so important for those of you that aren't aware of virtual assistant, like just so important. And there's a lot of women becoming VAs as well because it allows them the flexibility to be at home with their kids or have the freedom that they want um, and, and support in a different way. But what I love about you is you're coming out from behind the curtain, so to speak, and putting yourself in the forefront. Has that been challenging for you to say, hey, you know, I, as much as I, I love helping you and I love doing what I do, I want to be in the forefront now and be the leader and, and be seen in, in what I do. If you had asked me that 10 years ago, I would have said absolutely because I was one of those deathly afraid of speaking, just open up the ground and swallow me whole. I find that um, so hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, Actually, back in uh, 2007, when I was working my last J-O-B, uh, networking was a huge part of my role. And I had never done a networking event before. I didn't know what I was doing. My boss one day said, I can't go to this lunch. I need you to go. Here's the directions. Do you know, talk about just kind of tossing me into the lion's den. I, I stood up to give my 60 second speech that I had no idea what I was doing. I've never prepared an elevator speech before. Um, and by the time I was done, I was just like this. I was shaking so bad. I just, I wanted to throw up and I just wanted to die. Um, and so that is actually what got me started with the public speaking. I started networking at the Metro Chamber of Commerce in Atlanta a lot. And they, um, the head of the programs there actually made me the chair of their networking committee. So I ended up having to run all these meetings all of a sudden. And that really, I, I launched their Toastmasters group. And that really helped me to come out of my shell and realize, you know, I'm not going to die getting up in front of these people. And um, they're not standing or they're not sitting there judging me. And that, I think for me, that was always why I didn't want to get out in, in the forefront was, oh my gosh, people are judging me. What if I'm having a bad hair day? What if they think my outfit makes me look fat? You, you know, all that stupid stuff. Um, but once I was able to get over that, it was like, here I am. <laughs> Let's yeah. do this. So no, you know, 10 years ago, yeah, absolutely. It would have been challenging. Now I'm like, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. And I think that takes a lot of courage too. Like you saw that there was an area that you wanted to improve on and then you, you put yourself out there. And that's also another reason why I started Sister Suppers because so many women are feeling disconnected when they go into a networking group or they don't know how to make new friends. So when they come into women's homes, it's a much safer area. So I love that you like really stepped out of your comfort zone to like move through that as well. And now here you are, you are right. a daring woman. You are, and I think I mentioned this the, the, the last time we spoke is like, you're showing up as that daring woman. Like you're showing up as that leader to support women on so many different ways. So you're, you're running a nonprofit and a for-profit. That's a lot of work. So how do you like, you know, designate your time and where is your main focus right now? Um, so I have this, I, I have this problem that's called shiny new project syndrome. <laughs> and so I tend to want to do everything right now. Oh, new idea. Let's do it. Right. So, um, I, I, I try to do way too much at, at first and I'm doing this basically myself because we're a brand new company. There's nobody, there's nobody coming in. The only money coming in is, 
you know, I haven't completely shut my BA business down. I've left a handful of clients that will pay my bills. Yeah. And, and that's it. So, um, the majority of it has been on me and it's, it's been hard. Um, that's probably been the biggest challenge actually is that I'm doing, you know, 99% of the work right now. I've been able to actually connect with some wonderful people. I brought on my, my COO, Jerry, who, um, we've come to a, a, you know, an arrangement. She's, she's on part time as, as the CEO to help me get the funding so that we can bring her on full time. I have an intern who is just kicking butt with my social media, um, who is a six month intern intern, and then we're going to bring her on full time. So I've been able to, you know, find some of these people who are willing to basically donate some of their time because they truly believe in what daring woman is. And they truly believe in this vision and they know that this company is going to just rock the world of women around the globe. And so I, I've been very fortunate. Um, I just finally broke it, broke down and got a loan from my mom. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I, I need some capital coming in because I, I can't do this anymore. I've got five websites I'm trying to maintain um, that, all kind of coordinate with each other and um, you know, plus all this other stuff. And, and so I finally had to break down to get some capital so that I can hire some talent. Mm -hmm. And now that I've got that talent um, coming in, that will free up my time so that I can actually focus on the growth and the mission and, and all of that. So yeah. that's kind of how I'm, you know, how I'm doing it. I, I stumbled along for a while by myself, but now I'm getting a nice solid team of women. That's awesome. I love that. And I think there is something to be said around bootstrapping it when you first start because oh, absolutely. you get to learn like, what do you need? What are the gaps? What can I do? What am I best not doing? You know, all those sorts of things and something about when you're creating a vision that has like a global kind of feel that has like a mission based um, entity to it that really is a movement, right? Like for me, Sister Sup is a movement. For you, Daring Woman is a movement. It is, yep. You know, we're talking about similar things, but we're doing it in different ways in our own unique, unique ways. And what I love about that is when you enroll people into the vision, when they really believe in it, they'll, they'll do any, like, well, I shouldn't say anything, but they will really support you in it. They will do as much as they can. Absolutely. Totally. totally. Yes. What you're sharing is such an example of that. So what, what is it specifically about the nonprofit organization around helping women, um, homeless women or women that have gone through trauma and things like that, that you feel ultimately connected to? Is there something that you experienced in your life? I have been all three. So I did a short stint homeless with, um, with my oldest daughter when she was a baby. Um, I've been in multiple domestic abuse situations. Um, and I've been, I've been raped. So, and I've had several attempted rapes. Um, so I, I've been in all three situations. Thankfully, not as bad as some. Um, you know, I, I've met some women who their, their partners, their husbands were going to kill them. Um, you know, thank God I was able to get out before anything got to that point. Uh, and that's, I think due to my, my, you know, my own inner strength. But for me, it's, I, I know what it's like. These women, they get browbeat so hard that they believe that they're worthless, that they're, you know, the, the piece of trash on the ground is probably worth more than they are. And they don't know how to how to stand back up again and so that's why it's so near and dear to my heart because i've been there i i understand and i know that somebody has to be their voice until they can learn to speak again and so that's me i am their voice until they can learn to speak again oh that's that's incredible what is it about you through your journey that allowed you to find your voice um, you know, I think it's just, I've, I've always been a pretty strong, outspoken, sassy, snarky person. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm, I'm down to earth. I'm honest as, as they come, but, um, I, I love to cut up and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm good for a good snark. If you're feeling down, come to me cause I'll put a smile on your face with some silly little comment. But, um, and so I think that's a, a big part of it is just that. I have that strong personality. I'm Italian. 
I'm Italian, so that's it right there. Um, you know, we, we just are very strong and, and we just don't take anything off of anybody. And so when my situations would get to that point, um, I would, you know, in the beginning, I would try and work them out a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, I, you know, I had one where the, the day his fist connected with my mouth, um, mine connected right back and I moved out like several days later. Um, when Orlando killed my kitten in front of me with my two children in the next room, um, listening as I'm screaming hysterically because this guy is, is breaking my kitten's neck in front of me and he had to do it twice because he didn't work the first time. Um, I left two days later. He took off and didn't come back and it took me a couple days to make arrangements and I got the hell out of there. So, um, it's, it's that inner fortitude and, you know, and also I've, I've had kids. I, I've been, been a parent since I was 19. So it's, I'm not keeping my children in this situation. So that's, that's kind of been, you know, I think the, my backbone yeah. is, is my girls. Mm, yeah. Having a reason totally that's bigger than you. Would you yeah. say those experiences, um, you know, all the experience that you had around being homeless around, you know, sexual abuse, rape, um, physical abuse has, created you into the strong woman that you are now? I think it's definitely helped. Um, would I want to go through those again? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's something I'd want to relive. Um, it, it has helped me because um, there's so much mental and emotional baggage that comes with that. Um, I've had to spend years working on my own self-esteem. Um, I am my, my worst enemy. The, the stuff that I say to myself, I wouldn't utter to the worst person on the world, but I have no problem saying it to myself. So, you know, it's a journey that I have to work through. And I think that's part of my life lessons is, you know, my own self-worth. But a lot of that had to do with everything that I've experienced in the past. So yeah, I, I would have to say that a lot of that experience has helped me because I've had to go through so much healing and so much growing um, to get over that and to get past that and to not live in a victim state of mind. Amazing. Is there any particular like a mentor or someone that you follow that kind of got you onto a path of healing? Um... You know, I'd say probably my first touch with that would be Tony Robbins. Um, really, really got into him. Um, and then, you know, it's just been kind of the, the Jack Canfields and Brian Tracy's and, and those kind of people, Deepak Chopra. Um, and, um, you know, Oprah watching her story. So, you know, a lot of it is is just seeing these other stories. And, you know, lately I've taken to reading a lot of, um, nonfiction biographies, memoirs of women who have gone through hell and have come out strong. And that's part of what my podcast is, is interviewing these women who have gone through just these horrific stories or, you know, their own challenges and struggles and how it's empowered them and listening to those and talking to them, reading their stories that actually helps me because it's, well, they did this. You know, they went through this and they are so much better for it. Now, I know that I'm going to be okay. I can continue on my journey and I can continue to make myself better so that I can help others. Yeah, hundred percent. That's so powerful. It goes back to what we were saying before about if she can do it, I can do it. And I think there's something different between the energy of woman to woman than there is to woman to man. Like, Tony Robbins is amazing. Don't get me wrong. I think he's great. But yes. when it's a woman that has been through the journey of trauma, whatever that trauma looks like, and she comes out the other side, it just gives us more hope. It gives us more inspiration. Yes. It really makes us feel like we can do it. So I am just so grateful that you are doing this work. And I know many, many other women are and going to be as well and because I know that it's not easy like you said you're you're bootstrapping it you've asked for a loan from from your mom like all right. those 
things. But when we have that bigger vision, when we have that bigger why, that's what gets us out of bed in the morning. What do you think it was about, you know, you had like a really successful VA company. Was, do you feel like that was like really getting you ready? That was the stepping stone to be able to, to do what you're doing now? Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, 100%. I was like, okay, so the past decade has really helped me um, kind of hone my skills. I know how to work with VAs. I know how to do the techie stuff. So I can bootstrap this. I can build the websites myself. I, you know, I can do most of this work. Um, and I've already made a ton of the mistakes of being an entrepreneur. Um, because when I, when I came into the VA business that nobody had heard of a VA, nobody knew what it was. I had to figure this thing out on my own. And so my journey to success as a VA took longer, uh, because I had to figure it out on my own. So now I have that knowledge. I have that skill set, and I can definitely just turn it right to this company and bam, here we go. Yeah. And now hopefully you don't have to figure it. It sounds like you're not going to you're getting a really great team yeah. is not figuring it out on your own. Cause I think there's so much of the society that we live in is like, you've got to work hard and you've got to hustle and you've got to figure it out for yourself. But really when we can do it together, we really are better. Like we can, I mean, it's not to say that we can't do it on our own. We can actually, we absolutely can, but it takes longer and it's more lonely and it's harder. So why not ask for the support, get that help, you know, say, I, I need help. This is what I'm doing. Can, can you help me? And especially right. women, not to say that men won't, but um, I think women, we're natural nurtures. Like we want to help. We want to like see each yeah. other. Succeed. So getting that help is so important. Yes. It is. I, there's a quote that I love to say, and it's, um, we are strong alone, but together we're unstoppable. Oh, I love that. We are strong alone, but together we are unstoppable. That is so true. That is so true. So can you share a little bit more detail with the listeners around the different ways that they can connect with you through Daring Woman? Absolutely. Uh, So our main website is daringwomaninc.com, daringwomaninc.com. Uh, that's the main blog. You can get to the podcast. You can get to the magazine sites from there. Um, we are about to open our e-commerce store, which is shopdaringwoman.com. And it's going to have all kinds of fun goodies because what woman doesn't like to shop? Uh, I, I know there's a few out there, but, um, you know, the majority of us love to shop. So, you know, we're, we're, we're getting that up and running. Um, the Daring Woman Project Dot org is the nonprofit site that's been kind of put on hold right now just because I've had to focus so much time on getting Daring Woman up and running first. Uh, but that's um, now that I've been able to hire some some help, that's going to be coming back to the forefront. So those are the main ways that you can reach out to us. Um, you can subscribe to the Daring Woman magazine, DaringWomanMagazine.com. We are running a ridiculous. Um, introductory offer 12 issues for 1999 wow. um, just because it is a brand new publication so definitely take advantage of that while you can <laughs> and that's an online publication right it no it's not that's actually print that's print that's oh, a print wow. publication so yeah take advantage while you can <laughs> so i'm not gonna be able to keep it at that rate forever <laughs> Incredible. I'm so, definitely yeah. signing up for that. Wow. Nothing like good old print magazine delivered to your door. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Thank you, Tracy, so much for just Thank you. sharing your wisdom and your heart and doing what you're doing. Like I, any way I can support you, whatever that looks like, I want to get your message out in a big way because it's so important and your women need you. They really, really do. They need your voice. They need your strength. They need your Thank message. you. I need your understanding. So I just, I'm in, I'm in deep gratitude for you and listeners and watchers sign up for daring women, um, get inspired by these other incredible women and help Tracy grow her movement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you.